Vaccines have been called the greatest public health achievement of the past century, but they're actually a rather old idea. A thousand years ago, physicians practiced variolation to fight smallpox. They crushed up scabs from smallpox victims and blew that powder into patients' noses. After a mild illness, these patients developed immunity. Centuries later, in 1798, English doctor Edward Jenner deliberately infected healthy people with cowpox, producing smallpox immunity. The coming centuries brought rapid progress in vaccinology. 1877, germ theory of disease first proposed. 1930, cell culture practices allow for the production of viruses. 1979, smallpox is eradicated globally. 1988, World Health Assembly vows to eradicate polio. Globally, the number of polio cases decreases from 350,000 to just 187 in 2012. 2005, the CDC announces rubella is no longer endemic in the U.S., and the list goes on. But how effective are vaccines? Well, remember Edward Jenner, who infected people with cowpox? He's credited with saving over 530 million lives with his smallpox vaccine. The secret behind vaccinology is basic trickery. Vaccines contain a weakened bacterium or virus that mimics natural infection, triggering an immune response from the body. The immune system rapidly builds an army of cells designed to attack that specific infection, destroying the weakened invaders before they cause damage. A number of specialized immune system cells remain, called memory cells, that can quickly detect and destroy any later encounters with the disease. It's like target practice for your immune system. And with many vaccines, this immunity lasts for life. Yet for as long as vaccines have been fighting disease, there have been groups campaigning against the practice. During Edward Jenner's time, people actually believed using cowpox to inoculate against smallpox would turn patients into cows. More recently, groups have claimed that toxins found within vaccines cause autism. But many studies involving hundreds of thousands of children all strongly point out no correlation between vaccines and autism. And in 2009, the U.S. Court of Federal Claims ruled that the marisol-containing vaccines do not cause autism. Despite all the evidence for the safety of vaccines, one survey found that one out of four parents have delayed at least one vaccine for their children. A dangerous effect of vaccine refusal is the return of diseases once thought eradicated. The CDC announced the eradication of measles in 2000. But in 2011, 220 Americans became infected, the largest number in 15 years. Two-thirds of those infected had never received the measles vaccination. Currently, vaccine-preventable disease rates are at less than 1% of the pre-vaccine era in the U.S. But this could change if vaccine refusal spreads. Yet researchers are continuing their efforts to make the world a healthier place. They're working hard on developing vaccines for threats like HIV and malaria, cheaper vaccines that can be delivered to poorer areas, more effective vaccines with stronger and longer-lasting immune responses, and more efficient vaccine delivery systems. There are still many diseases out there waiting for us to let down our guard. Some are just a plane ride away. But with proper education and continued research, they can be beat. Because we're all in this together.